Hey there, my name is Gregor Carmel, CTO of One Home, and today I'll be giving you a brief demo of our new product, the One Home Server. First, a quick five minute overview of the server setup and matter integration. Afterwards, our improved ETS auto detection, then our brand new feature called project validation, which will improve finding mistakes in your project, and a couple of words about the future of the One Home Server product. Let's begin. First, we connect the device to the network using an Ethernet cable. Next, we connect the device to our KNX bus and to auxiliary power. Once the status LED on the device turns green, you can connect to the local dashboard. On a computer connected to the same network, visit in your web browser onehome.local which brings up the local dashboard of the device. The credentials are printed on the side of the device. Once you log in, we can add a new device. Usually an integrator would select auto detect from ETS, but for now let's add a device manually. We support many different matter device types, essentially all device types that make sense for KNX. And as the matter specification will grow, we'll continue adding new device types. Let's add an on-off light. The name of the device desk lamp. Let's create a new room called Studio. We're connected to the KNX TP bus gateway and the on-off set group address and the status group address. Here we created the device successfully. So now we added a couple more devices into our one home server. Now let's bridge these into matter. So for this demonstration we're going to use iOS and Apple's ecosystem. We have here an Apple HomePod which is an Apple Home Hub which is required for matter and let's try pairing our one home server with it. So first we need the Apple Home app we open the Apple Home app. We're connected to the same network as the server. Add accessory. We scan the QR code on the device. Add to Apple Home. Now these two devices will pair and we select where the bridge is. Let's say office. Continue. Continue. We can just set exit out of the setup and wait a couple seconds for the status to refresh. There we go. We have all our devices that we saw in our one home server dashboard. Let's try turning on and off the desk lamp. Yep, seems to be working. One of the nice things about Matter is that it's an open standard and all the various assistants are using it natively for their IoT language, which means we can actually use this exact setup with Google as well, for example. Let's try doing that. What we're going to do now is actually add Google Home to this One Home server. We can do this all via the Apple Home app. Click on the three buttons on the top right corner, select Home Settings, Go to Home and Hubs, Home Hubs and Bridges, select the Matter Accessory, turn on Pairing Mode. We receive here a setup code, which we copy into the clipboard. Now we open the Google Home app. So previously we already paired the Google Nest Mini to our Apple uh, Google Home. So we open the Home, we add the device, add new device. It takes a couple seconds to find the device. In the menu, select Matter Enable Device, no QR code, and from the clipboard, we enter the setup code. Click I agree. Add to Google Home. Six 
access your name. Continue. Continue. Device connected. Done. Now we have to wait here a couple seconds for the Google Home app to refresh the devices. Here they are. So now we see the same devices as previously in Apple Home. Let's try turning on and off the desk lamp. See how fast that was? That's because matter is local. So Google Home works much faster now. One of the great things about matter is that also other assistants are using it, which means any assistant that supports matter will work with the one home server. No dedicated integration is necessary. Plus, if there's any new apps that decide to integrate matter, it will work out of the box, including with all other assistants at the same time. That's matter for you. And now I'll show you the KNX device auto detection feature. It's one of our most loved features and we've greatly improved it. We added a very nice view to show you exactly what we detected to fix any mistakes. And it also supports re-uploading of project files and it automatically merges from your existing devices. Let's begin. In the one home local dashboard, go to add device and upload EDS file. We prepared a simple demo ETS project file with a couple of devices. Usually your project file would contain 100, 200 devices. Select from your computer, upload the file, and then you select the gateway to which you want these devices to be added to. If there's any ETS password, you can enter it here as well. This is the only feature that requires the one home cloud infrastructure, so an internet connection is required. We need this because ETS project files are very large, and this is performed with the One Home Cloud. Now let's select Start Detection. It takes a couple of seconds to upload the file and then to process it. And here we have it. We found seven different devices. Let's hide the details just for now. We found a couple of lights, blind thermostat, a couple of sensors, and also the associated device types. For certain device types, we can also change the device type that we detected. For example, here we detected a socket, we can change this to a light, and this information will also then propagate to the matter assistance. These are detected rooms. You can change the room, you can also add a new room, and you can also delete devices that you don't want to be imported. So here, for example, let's delete the temperature sensor. Let's show the details. Here we can see exactly which group addresses were imported and how they're linked. We also see the physical Canix actuator. And if there's any mistakes here, you can always click on the settings button and change the group address manually. Everything seems okay, so let's submit this data. We always try to improve the Canix device auto detection algorithm. So you can help us improve by sharing the data, how you fix these devices and what you have in your project file. And this will help us improve the auto detection algorithm. If you don't want to, no problem. You select your no thank you and we'll delete all data that was associated with this flow. So ETS import was finished successfully and now we can see all the devices that we saw before imported successfully. Now, let's try re-uploading the ETS project file. I made some minor changes in ETS and I will try re-uploading the KNX project file. Go to Add Device, Upload ETS File, and select the project file from your computer. Here I made a couple minor changes and let's start with the detection. Here we see that we have seven new devices, uh, seven devices, one new, one modified, and five existing. Since the existing devices are not merged, you can safely hide them from this view. We change the reading light, and in merging strategy, we can replace with an existing device, or you can create as a new device. We also see the temperature sensor, which previously we deleted from the import. So we'll just leave it here and submit. We get a warning about replacing devices. 
confirm and share the changes to improve the auto detection algorithm. And the devices were imported successfully. Oh, look. And this brings us to our new feature. The warning light next to the reading light has been turned on. Our next feature will help us find the problem and solve it as well. ETS projects are very large. Hundreds of devices, many, many group addresses, and it's very easy to make a mistake. Usually these mistakes go unnoticed until the customer encounters them during their day-to-day -day usage of their smart home. One of the most requested features by our customers was a simple feature that would find common mistakes. And this is exactly what we implemented in the One Home Server. Previously, we received here a warning light next to the reading light. If we click on the configure button and click on check configuration, although it will do some configuration checks and we can see we can't read group address 11119. So previously in the ETS, we selected the wrong group address. We could fix it here, but I'll show you something even cooler. If we exit the reading light settings, we can select the check configuration button at the top here and click on start. This will go through all the devices and check for any configuration issues. Here we find the reading light issue. We can only show the issues, click on details, and we see here the previous issue. So reading of the group address failed. We can click on configure button here and fix the issue manually. Save, all looks good. Since the one home server is completely local, if you are unable to solve your issue, you can here download a report and send it to one home support to help you solve the issue. Pretty cool, right? So that was a brief demonstration of the one home server. We've been working very hard to bring you the one home server with all the features I've shown you today. Completely local dashboard, bridging two important smart home protocol standards together and simplifying your workflow. This is only the beginning though. We will be later this year releasing our logic module, which will enable you to create powerful automations in a very simple to use way. Furthermore, we believe the future of the smart home is both wired and wireless combined. We will be bringing wireless IoT devices via matter into the one home server in the future enabling you to use wired KNX devices and wireless IoT devices together in a seamless way, bringing you the ultimate smart home experience. Thank you for your continued support and stay tuned.